the second edition of the summer manga haul is here got a bunch of cool stuff that i want to show you guys so let's get started Hey everybody, welcome back to the Manga Geekdom. Today we're gonna go over all the books I got in the month of July. Now, I do wanna mention that it is running a little bit late due to some real world issues, but nonetheless, it's here, it's fun, it's still summer. So expect the third and final one to cover some anime stuff along with some other books. Let's get started with the first one here, and that is Dr. Stone Volume 26, the last volume of this series. So cool to have a complete Shonen Jump series on my shelf. I love Dr. Stone. I'm not going to flip through the book because I actually haven't read it as of me posting this video. It's been a crazy month, I know. So I only need this one volume and I will be making a video on it because I love the series so much that I want to share my thoughts on it, on the overall plot. Look forward to that in the near future. Next one on the list, Pokemon Adventures Black and White. And this is, this is an exhausting story for me. Now, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'll summarize it as fast as I can. Unfortunately, this series is not out of print, but it is out of stock in most places, the big retailers, if you will. Unfortunately, I don't have the means to go to a store and find volume two or volume five. It has to be like Walmart and they'll usually carry the newer stuff that's coming out and reprints for popular titles that are still topping the charts, if you will. So on the previous haul videos, I may have shown on one of them volume one and then on another volume three. And that was what I could get at the time. So I ventured onto different areas of the internet and searched for two, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I had to go in total to Instock Trades, Amazon, eBay, Barnes and Noble, and I think maybe Books a Million, something like that. It was Barnes and Noble that had the majority of the books that I was needing, so I placed a big order from them. Unfortunately, after two days, I think, I got a really random email from them saying that two of the volumes, I think it was four and eight, were not going to be able to ship because the sender was not going to or, or the warehouse or something could not ship to my address yet the other volumes could i don't really understand the logic here but I'm used to these sort of things in life, so I hunted down the other volumes, which were four and eight through different websites. And some of the volumes you see here are a little bit rough and yellowed, but it's okay. I, at the prices that I got them, I don't mind. I just mostly want to own the series and read all of it. I love Pokemon. That's my favorite video game franchise of all time. I haven't read all of the Adventures volumes, certainly black and white, so I'm really excited to get it and, and read through it. And that is exactly what. What I did, but it's kind of wild if you see the spines and the logos, different iterations of Viz Media publishing this book. Now I need black and white too. Fortunately, I don't have it for this video, but I think I paid like $25 for all four volumes. They all shipped together, so I'm really excited about that. I won't have that issue again. And then afterwards, it would be to get Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire when it comes out next year, the Adventures version, not the Pocket Editions, and the X and Y manga that is currently being released. I think the last one comes out soon and uh, we'll be up to date with the Adventures line. Next up on the haul here is Record of Ragnarok Volume 7. I love the fights. I love how bombastic they are. These are very quick reads, so I have not read Volume 6. And with the release schedule being so wide, I would have to wait many months to get a new volume. So I'd rather wait maybe uh, until I get Volume 8 to uh, read the three volumes in a row. But certainly a lot of fun. Next one here is Junji Ito's story collection, Soichi. Always great to get another Junji Ito collection. Unfortunately, it's for Soichi, one of my least liked characters of his still. Looks really cool. Nice build, as always, for uh, Viz Media Books. This isn't my top recommendation for a Junji Ito book, but if you're like me and you want a complete set, of course, you're going to have to get this collection, right? Next one on the haul is a book that I have neglected for almost two years now. I think in December it'll be two years since it was released in North America, and that is Akira Toriyama's Manga Theater Hardcover Collection. At first, I was really psyched to get it, and then, just as easily, I kind of psyched myself out of getting it. I think it was when I made the decision to not get Shonen Jump 
related stuff because it was just too much and I have limited shelf space. I think that's how I psyched myself out of getting this release. I am a fan of Akira Toriyama. I do like many of his works. However, I'm not huge into the Dragon Ball franchise as other people. I did enjoy it growing up, but for some reason I sort of had a falling out when the first Super, or what would eventually be Dragon Ball Super, when the Battle of the Gods movie and the Resurrection F came out. I didn't love them and I felt like it was no longer for me and I was good with stopping on a franchise. I watched a little bit of Super just in case to reaffirm my beliefs here and they were mostly right. I, uh, I'm i okay not following that franchise even though I recognize that it's super popular and a lot of people like it yada yada. So with that said, I do like the creator a whole ton and his works, so I wanted to collect that specifically. So here we are with the manga theater hardcover. Again, I should have bought this from the get-go. I don't know why it took so long, but I was able to find somebody selling it for like, I think it was $14. It's in good condition, which is enough for me, especially for the price. I am getting other books that I will highlight in further home videos, so look forward to that. Blade of the Immortal Deluxe Edition Volume 9. It's insane that the journey is almost over. I don't want to ruin it for what's happening in here in case you have not read it, but I do recommend these volumes. Excellent quality, of course, from the folks at Dark Horse, a fantastic series with wonderful art. I will make a video once Volume 10 comes out to talk a little bit more about the series in general and my thoughts on it. The Dangers in My Heart Volume 6, published by Seven Seas Entertainment. I love this series. I am a huge fan of it. I really enjoyed the anime, and this is the first time that I'm reading stuff that was not in the anime adaptation, so I'm really excited about that. I do recommend this if you want some wholesome, unorthodox romance in your life. I'll just say that much. Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero. I recently talked about Volume 3 on a reading vlog, so I had to get Volume 4. And as of me making this video, I did order Volume 5, so I'm excited to continue that series. It's been a lot of fun with fantastic artwork. I really do enjoy the dynamic between the Demon Lord and, of course, the hero now, 10 years later, living together and becoming friends. It's a quirky, drawn comedy series that I do recommend if you're a fan of fantasy and want a little bit of of spice in your life, I guess. Here we have volume 6 of Kimono Jihen, also published by Seven Seas Entertainment, concluding this arc and starting a brand new chapter in the series. If you like sort of shonen -y jump action style with folklore and yokai, you'll be right at home with this series. Highly recommend it. Sengoku Yoko Volume 2. Again, similar with Kimono Jihen, that blend of fantasy action. I think you'll be right at home with Sengoku Yoko, a fun series that takes place in feudal Japan with demons and superpowers and all that cool stuff, while also highlighting here the amazing art from one of my favorite mangaka. Oshinoko Volume 2. If you can believe it, I actually found this at Walmart. Although it makes sense, it's a hot new property, so it would be there. I could have gotten it cheaper elsewhere, but sometimes I like the instant gratification of seeing a manga volume on a shelf and grabbing it right then and there. So yeah, continuing Oshinoko, I really liked volume one, but volume two is where the story really kicks off. So I made a first impressions video on the first book if you want to check it out on this channel. And if you're interested, I think volume two gets better and better. Kowloon Generic Romance Volume 4 by Yen Press. I have to admit I have not read Volume 3 so I need to catch up. This one is another phenomenal series with great artwork that I highly recommend. Speaking of romance, let's go a little bit younger here with My Dress Up Darling Volume 9. I really do enjoy this series. It's quirky and fun, especially the characters. That is its strongest suit. I know a lot of people will complain about certain areas of this manga when it comes to fan service, but let me be real with you. I am a little desensitized when it comes to stuff like that, simply because there's so much of it that I guess I just choose to ignore it sometimes. And I tend to focus more on the positive aspects of My Dress Up Darling, which is the relationship between the two characters and seeing the main guy open up thanks to uh, 
Kitagawa is always nice and wholesome to see, and I am rooting for their relationship at the end of the day. From Kodansha, we got a bunch of books here. Let's start with That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, Volume 22. Now I have a confession to make. I love this series. Some of you that have followed the channel for a long time, you might know that this is one of my favorite isekai. However, I have to admit, I have to come clean. I have not been reading this series at all. <laughs> the last volume I read was probably Volume 11 or 12. So it's been a while. I really do need to catch up. I've just been busy with other stuff. You know how it is? But now, here we are, Volume 22. Volume 23 is coming out soon, and then we will be caught up with the Japanese release. So that is awesome. We've come to the end of the manga haul. It's a pretty magical one at that, and we're going to finish it off with this series, this emblematic series, I should say, that I did start collecting for the very first time, I think, less than a year ago. I am talking, of course, about Sailor Moon. I skipped getting the Eternal Editions because of budget reasons and space issues. Now, that sort of changed. Not so much the space, but the mentality behind getting these books. So let me explain real quick. Similar with Pokemon Adventures, this is something that I've always wanted to own and read. I love the Sailor Moon friend. I did watch the anime growing up when the original Big Three came on TV, and that of course was Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, and Sailor Moon. I watched all three and really enjoyed them all. So I always wanted to own the original manga, and I started getting the smaller editions. They are cheaper in price, smaller, which was great, but I wasn't satisfied. I, I, I kind of wanted to get those Eternal Editions. I don't know why I neglected that when they were coming out. I knew that that was the edition to get because I love large trim editions. The bigger artwork is better. The overall presentation is better. So like I mentioned, it's probably a budget reason. I didn't have the money for it back then. I do now, thankfully, God bless. So I went ahead and picked it up. This was the only thing, the Eternal Editions were the only thing I got for the Right Stuff birthday sale, if you were wondering. There were a lot of tempting items, but I don't have infinite money, so I couldn't go that route. This was the only thing I splurged on just for the heck of it. Also, what happened to the smaller editions? Well, I had family visiting over the summer here, and one of my cousins is an avid reader and is starting to get into manga and all that stuff. So I went ahead and uh, gave her my volumes of the Sailor Moon Naoko Takeuchi collection, the smaller ones, and she was super happy about that. So that was sort of an excuse, I guess, to get the Eternal Editions, and I went ahead and upgraded. Also, I gotta give a shout out to Riley, the Omnibus Collector. He was the one that said, I don't know why you would get the smaller editions because I know you're going to like the Eternal editions because we're very similar in, in our collecting and reading and all that stuff. And we both enjoy the larger trim size. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but uh, what am I going to do? So fast forward to now, 2023, I'm like, yeah, I know <laughs> you were right. So I got uh, these big editions, which look fantastic. I love the presentation on them. Just as tall as a graphic novel uh, trade paperback. Really nice build. Love that it has all the colored pages. I love the glossy pages. Just really nice, man. But yeah, all 10 volumes here. I am missing the Sailor V stuff, which I will get soon, but I'm just happy overall. Like I said, love the presentation. Also, volume three, just they went nuts. They went full ham with the glossy texture to it compared to the rest of the books. I don't know if that was a mistake, just my copy or every copy. So if you do have it, let me know if that was a mass produced thing or just a mistake, a quality control issue. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I'm like, whoa, they went overboard on the glitter here, but still it looks fantastic. I love the series so much. So now I'm a proud owner of the original anime and the original manga. I don't have Crystal. I don't know if I'm going to get that as well, but I'm happy with where I'm at. Uh, as a Sailor Moon fan, uh, this is the definitive, I can safely say this is the definitive edition to own. However, I do recognize that if money and budget and all that stuff is an issue, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting the smaller editions. However, you might be waiting a while because they've only released, what, three volumes out of the 10 and volume four had been delayed for, I think, at least 
least two years now, and it's finally coming out later this year. Volume 5 is scheduled for early 2024, I think. So yeah, it's going to be a long wait. This is a very popular series, and the Eternal Editions can be found in a lot of places. That's, I guess that's why the delay with the smaller ones. Maybe they wanted to space things out. I don't know. So there you have it, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been another manga haul, the second summer manga haul for 2023. We got another one coming at the end of August, early September, which will feature all the anime. I've purposely left those out because I did get some retro cool DVDs and a lot of anime on Blu-ray that I want to highlight and geek out about. So look forward to that haul when it drops. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you, everybody, for all the likes, for commenting, for subscribing and being a part of the family. You are family. Thank you so much. I do appreciate you 100%. If you want me to talk about any of the products shown here, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's going to be it. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.